All right, hello, hello, Chad Schimmel back with another video. Today I'm making an ice cream scoop. Now this is a Turner's Warehouse ice cream scoop. It is not the one that is threaded that I normally make. This is a new one that is a glue-in handle. I should say a glue-in head into the handle. So I think you'd primarily want to use an all resin blank for this scoop because that way you can wash it without worrying about getting wood wet because the scoop will not come out. But to jump right in here, you saw me drill uh, a hole for the shaft of the scoop and then put it right on the lathe. And I am turning between centers here to get this thing round. Once I get it round, I'm gonna throw it in a chuck. Now, I'm using the Record Power Regent lathe, a uh, nice full-size lathe, and I'm using Easy Wood Tools. I think I've got the full-size finisher there, so that makes short work of making it round. I'm gonna throw in a chuck. This is an SC2. I don't know why I said it like that, SC2 chuck. And I put the other end between centers, or between the live center I used for that hole. Wow, I can't talk today. On the other end, I put the hole on the live center and that keeps it in place. But I'm just gonna cut this thing down and make it round first and then shape for the cap that the ice cream scoop goes into. This has a little cap that keeps it all contained, strengthens the end where you cut the tenon down for the cap, and uh, makes it nice and easy to make. So really, really simple project here, but it's kind of fun. And I made this for my house, but then I ended up putting it on display at the store. I used a uh, Top Choice Blanks hot rod blank here, Hot Wheels, I should say, Hot Wheels. And it's a really bright color. It's got like orange, blue, white, clear. Uh, I think I'm forgetting a color, but it's really colorful and it's got some amazing swirls. So at Turner's, we have this in the pen blanks, the handle blanks, the bottle stoppers, rings, everything. So you can use this blank for uh, anything you want because we have it for all of them. But this stuff turns, it's a Lumalite. These blanks turn so easy. We make them right here in house so we know they're good quality and they're cast under pressure, but it's simple work just shaping this. Now this, I actually jumped to the Rikon. I wanted to try the Rikon uh, negative rake on their finisher tool. And it worked really well, cut nicely, nice big shavings with it. Um, so either one, I love the Easy Wood tools. Those are my, my first choice always, but I had this one ready. So I wanted to test out the Rikon and it worked really nice. So I would definitely use it again. And I will use it again because it's on my tool wall. But you can see here, I'm just shaping the handle. Handles are pretty simple because there's not a lot to them as far as fitting parts. So once you've got that done, you can kind of just play with the shape all you want. And I wanted this to kind of have a dip in the middle and then big on each end. So that way, it, you know, your hand fits it really well, uh, just like any handle, really. So here you can see up there where that cap goes, I'm just shaping the body. And I now have my Easy Wood uh, Radius Rougher, and I'm kind of going through that shape. When I stop this, you'll get to see all the cool swirls. But I'm right now I'm doing the uh, cutting the tenon, and I like to use the detailer, the Easy Wood detailer, to cut a nice big section for the tenon. And I find it easier than when I go to do resin, I can just use a saw or a parting tool and cut that off. So I just kind of shape it out here and that's pretty pretty easy way to do it as far as making a wide enough gap for a saw or a different tool. Now, I when, it's funny when I was turning this, I stopped it. I had turned this way down and I thought I had maybe, I don't know, quarter plus inch. And I turned this thing way down. I was still shaping it. I turned the lathe off and I turned around and the handle literally just fell off the lathe. I had turned it down like an eighth of an inch left and I didn't realize it. So right here where I'm turning this, there's barely anything holding on. I'm amazed that I was able to turn it and it held on. So it literally just fell off the lathe when it was sitting there. Um, luckily it was off and it didn't go flying or anything. But So I just flipped it around, stuck the, the cap end where the tenon is into the chuck and turned it the rest or sanded it the rest of the way that way. So here I'm just sanding. 
I go straight from the tools to 600 and 800 sandpaper wet. And I find that that takes all my tool marks out. It allows me to do any final shaping and it looks really good. So I do 600, 800 wet sandpaper and then I jump straight to Zona. So I probably won't bore you with all the Zona paper here. But if you're not familiar with Zona paper, it's a polish paper, a lot like micro mesh pads or polish pads. And what I like about it, there's six steps, green through white. And it's basically like one micron to 30 micron, or I should say 30 micron to one micron. So it's really fine, like up to 15,000 ish grit maybe. Um, and I do that all the way through. And then I use what's called ring bling. It's a it's basically six, the sixth step from Magic Juice, that kind of a compound, to just give it the final shine. So I do it all the way through with Zona here, and it shines like glass. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. And then I dry it off. I'm careful not to like use that paper towel to scratch it, but I put a little ring bling on it here, and this thing just looks phenomenal. That shine, it's not wet anymore. That's just the shine in the, in the resin. So it comes out awesome. Once you're done here, you can take it out and then it's on to assembly. So I did do a little bit of hand sanding right on the very end where I had my live center and that was it. But look at that shine. That was a sound effect in case you were wondering. So I've got this done. It's polished up good. I'm going to glue it together or epoxy it together. I'm using five minute mercury epoxy two part. Just mix it up here. And this is pretty, I mean, you're going to see here, this is really simple. Mix up the epoxy, put some in the hole, put some around the tenon that you turned for the cap, and just put it all together. Um, I used a clamp to hold it together, and I probably left it in there, I don't know, an hour or two. But, I mean, I only really needed to leave it in there 20 minutes to make sure that epoxy was good and hard. But I didn't need the, the scoop right away, so I just put it all together and left it in there. Now, when you're doing epoxy, you'll see me wiping on here. Make sure if you get any epoxy on anything, you wipe it off while it's still wet. It is a lot, a lot easier to clean in most cases when it's still here or when it's still wet before it dries. Now, if it's on the metal, a lot of times when it dries, you can kind of just pop it off. But sometimes it's a little difficult or it'll discolor your finish. This is stainless steel, so it shouldn't. But... Uh, if you can get it off, just take a minute and look and get it off. But here it is. It's done. And it is ready for ice cream. Unfortunately, it didn't make it home with me. It's now at Turner's Warehouse on display. But I'm going to make another one for the house. So thanks for watching.